for you. Do you have any idea how a roller coaster works? Well, let me take you back to the 16th century. So back in 16th century, the ideas of roller coaster was originated from the Russian ice slides. It was built out of lumber with a sheet of ice that's few inches thick covering surface. In 1784, the first wheel of roller coaster was built which is situated in the gardens of Orenbaum in St. Petersburg. Now enough with the past, let's move on to the modern road coaster. Oh, hi! So now I'm going to explain you about our modern roller coaster. Of course, obviously we know our modern roller coasters are better compared to the one that we had in 16th century. Ours are high-tech, safer, and better looking. There's a many different types of roller coaster. Back in the day, we only had wooden roller coaster. Ah, it was a nightmare. Today, we like the adrenaline rush. So the roller coaster needs aerodynamic shape, making the ride faster. Also, they are made out of five carbon fiber and steel, making it more durable compared to the wooden roller coaster we had. So now that you have a brief understanding of the history, let us take you back to the basics. So there are two energies that we will be working on for our topic which are kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. So as you can see here, I have drawn a hill. And at the top of the hill, we will have potential energy, which has a formula of mgh. So potential energy, it is known as the energy which is resulted from its position and configuration. As an object drops from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill, potential energy would decrease, but kinetic energy would increase. So kinetic energy, as we know, has a formula of half mv square, and it is known as the energy of motion. So what's the difference between these two energies? The difference comes from the velocity and its height. A ride often begins with a chain and motor exiting force on the cars to lift the coaster to the top of a tall slope. Once the car reaches the slope, the gravity takes over the rest of the ride works on energy transformation. Here is an interesting fact. There is no motor and engine that takes the roller coaster around the track. So, I'm here to give you guys a question. How on earth can it move along the track? At the top of the hill, the car possesses a very high amount of potential energy because it is elevated to a very high above the ground. This is as the potential energy depends on the mass and the height of an object. The higher the object goes, the higher amount the potential energy it will have. As the car move from the top of the hill to the lower ground, it will eventually lose the potential energy. However, it will gain kinetic energy due to an energy transformation from potential energy to kinetic energy. Uh, this is because of Newton's first law of inertia, and objects remain stationary or in a constant motion unless disrupted by an external force. Why the car is slow down when they approach to a new hill? It is initial, which we move forward. Once car go through loops, turns, and smaller hill, the only forces that act upon the cars are the force of gravity, the normal force, and other forces such as air resistance. So when we are riding a roller coaster, we will think that we're going through a round loop, but not. It is actually known as a quantoid loop. What is it? Well, it is a section of a spiral where the radius is always changing, unless a, unlike a circle loop. The bottom of the radius of the quantoid loop has a has a radius that is larger compared to the top. And when we're riding a roller coaster, our acceleration will increase, right? That is because of the change in speed and its direction. There's a continuing change in direction for the riders in the clock loop. Therefore, a change in direction is one thing of the acceleration. So as the rider is going up the loop, they slow down. As we're going down the hill, our kinetic energy and speed will go up. And vice versa, when our height increases, our kinetic energy and speed will go down. Therefore, that shows that there's greater speed as our, the rider is going down the hill. The connection of roller coaster application to the society and societal needs is it will provide more job opportunities, especially in the field of science and architecture. For example, a background in engineering is required to become a roller coaster engineer. In order to be successful in this industry, students must have good visualization skills and understand the basic fundamentals of physics. Both of these skills help designers to construct a safe ride for the public. 
At the very top and the very bottom of the loop, the acceleration is primarily directed towards the center of the circle. So, if all the forces which act on the roller coaster is added as a vector, then the net force will be directed inward, which is toward the center of the circle. By neglecting the air resistance and friction, the only force that will be experienced by the roller coaster will be gravitational force and the normal force. So the normal force will always acting to the direction that is proportional to the tracks, while the gravitational force will always acting downward. You guys have enjoyed our video on energy and momentum on the concept of roller coaster. We really enjoyed making the video, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. I'm John. I'm Shimmy. I'm Holly. I'm Zoe. Bye. You are the one thing, one thing I'm living for. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment as well. I'm John. I'm Shimmy. I'm Polly. I'm Zoe. Bye. 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 The initial is the thing that. The acceleration. The acceleration. I just stop it. Stop. Bye. Don't forget to comment as well. I'm John. I'm Shimmy. I'm Polly. I'm Zoe. Bye. Bye.